Here's another day for paramotoring here in Memphis. It's actually sunny today. Maybe the GoPro will look a little better. This is my uh, my phone, so we'll see what the difference is between the footage. But anyway, uh, it was forecast to be not windy, and it looks pretty good. I stuck a ribbon over there on the little pole that's attached to the electric box, just to give me like a little windsock. I keep a roll of that uh, contractor's ribbon just so I can tie onto things if the wind seems a little bit sketchy. It was blowing a little weird and now it's calmed down all the way. It's about 3.30. I got the uh, Air Conception 130 here. I got my janky snowboard helmet with some earphones that I had laying around that were already the right type. So I uh, went ahead and mounted them up as people tend to. Snowboard helmet is the same as, uh, I guess, the, what everyone else is using for paramotoring. Also, somebody asked about gloves when it's cold. I've had these for like 12, 15 years, and there's some kind of Gore-Tex, well, that's what they call them, but some kind of Gore-Tex leather glove of some sort. Gives you some dexterity. It's for motorcycle riding, but they certainly work for this down into the 30s and 20s, so uh, I've been using them. Not good if you're going to go snowboarding, though, because they'll get soaked. So I've set the wing up right over there at the corner of the field. I plan on launching kind of caddy corner, going to the other corner over there, and turning around and kind of going backwards from the way that I've been taken off. So uh, let's see how she does, and enjoy. All right, everybody, we finally made it. So you saw the first takeoff did not go so well. So I'm not exactly sure why that happened. Uh, there were some kind of random gusty winds, like I said when I first started. I showed some winds, and then I started to go down to another place in the field and change directions, and then the wind stopped, so I figured I want that whole long length that I can get to uh, get up there, and thank goodness I did, because on that uh, second attempt, um, I had to kind of correct the wing a little bit to try to keep it hidden between that pole and 
heading over and I had to really hold down hard on one side just to uh, kind of correct it right off from the bat so it was so slow to get it kind of stabilized before I could really add in any power to get moving. And again, I'm no pro at this, I'm fairly new still. So uh, we made it all right. I had plenty of room to kind of scoot by the trees there towards the end and keep in the clear. I would have had to abort had it lasted any longer than that though. I was definitely getting to the end of my rope. Uh, also, right when I started, uh, this is the first time I've ever tried to hook up the speed bar uh, while it's on my back. I did my adjustments, uh, just kind of a hang test adjustment to make sure I had as much of the full range of motion as I could get, but I'd never actually hooked up the speed bar. I ran it over in my mind several times, tried to get the theory right, but uh, the cables, you have to kind of run them the right way so they don't kind of pull on anything or chafe on anything and they go outside the bars because when the wing's up there's kind of a slight angle to it so uh, when they come up through the roller behind the chair it kind of goes around the outside of the bar and uh, there's a little tiny triangle piece of webbing that's in the very back of my chair and I kind of went straight up through it it was probably about two inch or three inch by three inch or something like that it was a small little square piece where two pieces met and I went straight to the chair and so I went straight out there and it seemed to be uh, in the right spot but at first I didn't have that quite right so I had to stop I didn't show that on the film uh, so I stopped and I reset it all pulled it out the right way made sure it wasn't chafing on anything uh, before I went I actually started to not do it but I figured yeah we want to go ahead and t test this out I don't want to put it off any longer I also was going to use my chase cam but uh, I don't like the idea of using the chase cam in that confined space that I'm taking off them. So maybe when I go to uh, an airport or a larger field where I don't have anything near my landing that's going to uh, screw me up, then I'll put that chase cam on and try that out. It's a homemade one. It's not the same one Tucker has. It's made out of uh, an arrow shaft, a pop bottle with some Nerf dart fins, and uh, it's been balanced for the GoPro 3 that I've got. So. That was uh, kind of my launch here, and uh, to test my speed bar out, because I have no idea how this is going to go, figured let me get up some height here, because I'm not sure if, uh, you know, how fast this thing's going to drop, am I going to be able to maintain level flight, etc, etc, so I figured let's get way up here uh, so that we have no issues, I figured maybe even my foot could get caught in it or something, I don't know, I'm new at using this thing, so uh, figured let's give it a try. So I'm heading up, just kind of uh, went straight north of my field, and I figured I'd check my altitude and uh, everything here to see what it looked like. It started getting freezing cold. It was 42 degrees when I left, but it was cold up here. So here you see 2,037 feet and 23 knots. That's with my trims set to normal, my neutral setting, and no speed bar, and still climbing. So I figured I'd uh, at least kind of get a look at my altitude because I knew I was higher than that tower that was behind me that I told you guys about in the last video. And I wanted to make sure I wasn't at the Memphis Class B 3,000 foot ceiling. Actually, it's 4,000 foot in this section, uh, but still want to kind of keep an eye on that altitude because I don't want to be in Memphis airspace. FedEx has the right of way for sure here, and they park something like 150 planes on there at any given time, so they're cruising by here all the time. So, uh, checked the altitude there, made sure uh, I was in a good spot, and then uh, now i got to try to figure out how to get this speed bar out. Now the Velcro strap underneath my seat is pretty tough. Uh, it's, it's really nailed in there, and uh, it was a little bit tough to kind of get it. So here I'm going to pull my trims out and get all the speed I can from that and then going to get the uh, speed bar pushed all the way out now so there we go, now we got the speed bar pushed all the way out and uh, we got to do another check again here so we got to see how fast we're going because we'll be the point of trying the speed bar now I can feel it lean forward and not try to climb as much so that was an obvious, uh, obvious feeling that I could feel. And here, 
can't see the phone. I thought I held it out, but I got 31 knots with the trims out, the speed bar max. Uh, I still probably had like a centimeter or something that the speed bar pulleys weren't touching each other just perfect. Uh, so pretty close. So maybe I could get 32. Uh, I'm not also, I don't know how much the wind is affecting me here because uh, the winds are a little different up here than they were down where I was at. But uh, not bad, not bad at all. So I got 31 knots. I was seeing 25, 26 with my trims out uh, before. And you saw 23, 22, 23 with my trims at neutral. And I was kind of climbing a little bit. So, uh, so there you go. So that's the Spider 26 meter. Uh, I'm roughly 190 pounds plus 50 something, 60 pounds for the machine. Um, so uh, with that combination on a 26 meter wing for the Spider, that's kind of uh, a rough estimate. Probably trims in 19 uh, and then fully out with the speed bar, low 30s, give or take. So uh, I decided to uh, cut into this little bit here. Here's another first that I wanted to try. Uh, sort of a first. I've been kind of tempting to go down low and, and do the fun skirt the ground type of thing that uh, all the cool cats do. However, I don't have quite the torque as some of the bigger ones and uh, got to really kind of feel it out on this 130. It's not instant push, so it takes a little bit more revving and the power is more up in the high end. So I'm trying to ease it down in here. So what I did was I uh, just tried to level out as much as I can and then ever so slightly take a little bit of power off so that I would sink slowly but not, not too quickly. If I let the power off, I'd probably plow right into this field here and smack my face in the ground. But uh, to avoid that, just tried to level out at maybe 20 feet and then slowly let it sink by just letting ever so slight power off to kind of keep this uh, going. I know the sun's in you guys' eyes, so uh, we'll spin this around and uh, try to get a shot where you guys can actually see this. It's a lot prettier when the camera's not uh, washed out. So we just passed McDonald's as well, which is over in those buildings right ahead of me now. And I uh, got a little height on the turn, so we're going to come back down and try to skirt the bottom just again. And you can hear the motor as I kind of ease in and out of it. And where my comfort zone goes. So here we go, we're getting back down low with this ditch here. Let's see how that goes. Still coming down, so I think I got uh, my lowest point I calculated, probably five foot off the ground, kind of nice and steady. Still creeps me out a bit, I'm no pro. Uh, so trying to play it safe here and uh, not screw anything up. And we'll pick back up off the ground a little bit here in a second. Sure, it looks faster than 25 miles an hour or so. Alright, so now we're going to head back towards my area some, and I've got a little treat for you guys. I've actually, uh, so I play the piano, I play quite a, a few different instruments, and to avoid some copyright entanglements, I can't play anything that's an actual song, like something from a movie or something like that. So I just kind of made up some, uh, some nice flying music here, something slow and a bit uh, melodic. Hope you enjoy that. If not, you can say so and uh, I won't put another one back in there. Or I could try to make it something different, a little more upbeat. We'll see.
hope you enjoyed that. Um, just kind of a little something I threw together. So here we got it coming for a landing here. And I've been wanting to try this on trims all the way in. I've never really tried landing past the neutral line. Because um, it just says on the main paperwork, take off and landing on the white line on the trims. But I figure I'm tired of the extra horizontal movement. So I'm going to try and see what it feels like here out in the field before I go and attempt to kind of go into that enclosed space to land here. So I pulled the trims all the way tight, which is probably about three inches past the white lines, four inches maybe, so there's, there's a good bit extra there on the spider wing. I was worried that uh, maybe it would try to stall the wing too much or something like that. So I'm just checking it here and I notice that uh, I don't have to give it hardly any gas and I'm climbing. I mean, it climbs like crazy. So uh, I noticed before when I was looking, I was climbing anywhere from three to 500 feet per minute, um, which seems pretty good, uh, if the app was reading correct, which hopefully it was. Uh, so here, maybe maybe faster, or maybe because my, uh, my speed is actually a little slower and more drag, maybe it's not really any faster, but uh, less distance for the vertical climb, perhaps. So instead of going a thousand yards for a certain height, maybe I'm only going 500 yards and getting the same height. Anyway, it felt fine, and so I figured I'll fly on over here, uh, back to my landing zone. I'll land the same way I took off, just in case there's any wind, although it didn't look like there was any on the flag. So uh, one thing I have to do is this is super sketchy here. There's a set of power lines. I've got to come over and land quickly before I run out of field. So I don't want too much height over the power lines or it'll carry me too far. And I also don't want to hit the power lines, of course, because that would end my uh, career pretty quick. So here we go, I went ahead and shut the motor off right over the power line top when I knew I had it. And come in and we're testing this out for the first time. And this is much, much slower than it usually is. Oh, there we go. So just barely stepping in there and I have zero wind. And now I've got a mess because my GoPro caught all of my lines. But anyway, thanks for watching. You guys take care and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if I could change anything. We'll see how it goes. Bye.